small area. The temperature you need to work out for this is between yellow and down to dark red. So if you see white sparks in the fire, it's because your, your metal's burning away inside there. It's in there. That's too hot for what we're doing. It's firecracker. So don't get it as hot as that, and you'll be fine. There are lots of different types of scroll, but this one's called a fishtail scroll. And the reason it's called a fishtail scroll is because it starts off looking like the tail of a fish. After first forging an even taper, Don then uses the edge of the anvil to begin turning the scroll. Coaxing the iron into the required shape calls for extreme precision in the control of both hammer and anvil. This is always the most important part of a scroll centre. If you start off with it right, you're starting as you should mean to go on. Scroll making dates back as far as the 13th century, and it's still the most common form of a blacksmith's decorative work. Not brute strength, gentle. Blacksmithing is gentle. It's a hard, aggressive material, but we're trying to put beauty into it, you know? There we are, there we have a scroll. Took about two to three minutes to do that. So that's what you've got to try and attempt to do. It's a difficult one to do. And this is only day two. This is day two. What's mm -hmm. going to be like in a few weeks? They must learn to control the temperature, which is in the metal. So it must be consistent to get the curve, the gentle curve of the scroll, perfectly proportionate to the middle of the scroll. That's just like a piece of plasticine when it's hot. Yeah, yeah. And you're just cajoling it to do what you want it to do. Feeling like a real worker and an artist in the same patch, like, you know? I'm taking a straight piece of metal and I'm shaping it, bending it, manipulating it to suit what I need to. You have to actually be gentle, but at the same time, be firm. But it's very enjoyable. It's great. Hit it harder rather than tickling. Yep. Jill's having a bit of a problem with strength. She's having to use a smaller hammer than everybody else, and so consequently, she's taking longer to do the task simply because she's not using a heavier hammer. And she's frightened of getting the stuff as hot as it needs to be. Today, I can't get it right, but that's gonna happen. It's not nice, I don't like it, but I'll, get, I'll live with it until I come out the other side. Better at it. So I want more confidence. More aggression, all right? Yes, I am enjoying it very much. But I'll enjoy it more when I get it right. Now it's time to see if any of them have got it right. Dominic, this one here, you've got a flat on it there. You've got a nice tight scroll in the middle. If you look at that side, that's actually quite good. Yeah. So you've, you've just not got the consistency through the scroll to the other side. Hugh, that's a little bit uneven. Nope. And the tight's a the, the centre's a little bit too tight. It comes in a bit too much there, as you can see. But quite good. Jill, you've got the edges right, but the middle's a bit bulgy. Yeah. But you've all got potentially quite a good result. Um, so, well done. There is only one way to master any craft, and that is dogged perseverance. For every one hit that goes in the right place, there are two that go in the wrong. You've got to keep your eye on this one. And over the next few days, the trainees try their hand at all manner of scrolls, from fishtails to beveled and halfpenny snubs. We've got an extremely thin neck to, it. neck to it. I think the best thing you can do is cut it off about there, and we'll start again. Take four. <laughs> None of them are finding it easy. Who can make the most fresh starts? That's what it is. I think mean, you have to get used to the fact that you're not getting it right the first time. Or perhaps even the second time. Or perhaps even the third time. <laughs> That's it. Ah. Don't do any more. It's a good effort, is that? You can see the difference now. Yeah. And the skills that's required to actually be a blacksmith. Yeah. I'm a lot happier. It's given me my humour, my sense of humour back again, which I lost. I wasn't like that before. Working on a computer station day in, day out tends to narrow your, your perspective. This, because it's almost like metal expanding, it expands your perspective. 
And as the first week draws to an end, Hugh's work is making quite an impression. This is the scroll that Hugh produced, which is almost identical to the one that I produced. Hugh has done a fantastic job in producing this one, which I would say would pass muster any day of the week. Whilst the trainees continue to wrestle with scrolls and hammers and extreme heat, I'm off to Bristol to see Brunel's SS Great Britain. An iron ship that was forged on the crest of the molten wave of the Industrial Revolution. It's an extraordinary thought, but Brunel's SS Great Britain, at its time the, the largest metal steamship in the world, was made in blacksmith shops. The plates were forged by steam hammers by blacksmiths. And it captures that moment when the Industrial Revolution took the blacksmith's art and used it to build this enormous empire of commerce. I'm meeting Shane Casey, a marine archaeologist, to learn how the traditional blacksmiths realised Brunel's revolutionary concept. The iron plates would have been rolled to specific uh, thicknesses and shipped down to Bristol in generally uh, six foot by two foot lengths. Meanwhile, the Great Western Steamship Company had erected a massive factory and there they would have heated the plates up and then forged them to the desired curvature of the hull. So you're implying that every plate was done as an individual unit? Yes. Everyone was made to fit? Yes, yes. The ship weighs three and a half thousand tons and took more than 300 people over four years to build. Well, here, Monty, you can yeah. see the structure of the ship. The whole thing is held together by hundreds of thousands of rivets. Each rivet made by hand mm -hmm. and put in by hand. Requiring absolute precision, speed, teamwork, and an eye for exactly how hot the rivet was. What you've just described is a blacksmith's craft, isn't it? Precision, Absolutely. speed, an eye for heat, yes. understanding yes. the metal times lots of hundreds of thousands. For four continuous years. Well, you get good at it, wouldn't you? Back at the forge, the trainees are now in their second week, and Don wants to move them on to making a finished product. Morning. Morning. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. Start of a new project, part of the skill of a blacksmith is to actually make something to a drawing, or to an example, and replicate it. Yeah. So that it's exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ten of these. Yeah. And they've got to be done by Friday. Oh, thank God, I thought you were saying lunchtime. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one, you take that one, and Don will take that one, and we'll finish the last one on. Well right. What do you think? Yeah. Making ten flambeaux all precisely the same will employ the forging and scrolling skills that they've learned so far, as well as introducing them to some new ones. And keep that at the right angle. Wrapping their scrolls around the jig allows them to duplicate the flambeau basket exactly. Too high, that. Look at that. There, we've got our first basket. That is awesome. Hey, Joe. Yeah. What do you reckon of that? Oh, well done, that man. Are you impressed, aren't you? Well, absolutely. Oh, Who wouldn't be? So I good. think it's cramped. <laughs> 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 you should do it again. <laughs> God's sake. The thing is, I will be doing it again and again. It might be repetitive, Go on. but Dominic seems to be in his element. I love it. I thought I was going to be learning some skills. I didn't realise I was going to feel so passionate about this and I'm absolutely revelling in it. <laughs> However, despite having won Don's early approval, Hugh's determination to get everything perfect is beginning to go against him. Hugh will mess about on a, a simple detail rather than just getting on with the job, and it's really frustrating and irritating to watch him do that, cos you see, just bloody get on with it, you know? Whoa, 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 it's got to be scrapped, that one. You just left it in a bit too long. <laughs> Despite Jill's blacksmithing genes, it still isn't coming naturally. She, she, first of all, doesn't get the bar very hot in the fire. And secondly, when she takes it out, she spends a lot of time thinking about it, looking at it. So by the time she's decided where to hit it, it's cold and it has to go back in the fire. The idea is to strike while the iron's hot, as we all know. I have never been so bad at something and enjoy the process so much. So far, the trainees have tried hard to follow the aim of the task, which is accurate replication. But when it comes to making the last few flambeaux, 
Hugh can't resist taking a bit of artistic license. That's not bad. Is that where you want it bending in? Yeah, we want it bending in that way. If somebody came into your forge and said, I want ten of these, yeah. that's what they'd want, ten of those. Not ten redesigned to your own design. Now all that remains is the final stage of the process, which is to rivet the components together. Okay. Numero uno. Nine left. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just have a look at what we've got here. <laughs> First of all, the thing that strikes me most is that if you put the scrolls facing you and then look at the difference in the bends at the bottom, this is how it should be, that's how it shouldn't be. So that's wrong. But the worst effect we've got here is the fact that that has only got two twists on it. The template had three. The importance of keeping the things all the same has been allowed to go to the wall a bit. Yeah. For me, it was a bit of a challenge because I prefer more artistic flair when I'm doing something. And it was difficult for me to actually stick to the brief, like start putting in an extra scroll and say, well, that's nicer and that's better than the, the clients and we'll go with that. You know, you can't do that. Not with this type of exercise. Don's organised a bonfire party and has invited some of his fellow smiths along. There's the lads. Hey, how you doing? Hi, guys. Hi, Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Dominic. You all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Good journey. Andy, what do you reckon to that? Yeah, it's very good for the first attempt. Yeah, yeah. Rivet's pretty good. Yeah. And it's... Oh, okay. Kicking oh, out oh, at an angle. Narrow there. It was very wide there. Yeah, I like that one. Flat there. Stick it in the ground, boys. <laughs> That's really brilliant. Are you happy with it? That's the most important thing. Oh, I'm very yeah, happy with it. You are happy. Are you all right with the eye? Where's Jill? Are you happy with that, Jill? Absolutely, yeah. Where's that, darling? Actually, they work. I think it's great, is that? Useful and beautiful. We're really yeah. pleased with that. Lovely. It's lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> we started the week making a nail, and then two weeks later, we're making these flambos, and you think, well, OK, I wouldn't necessarily be able to remember how to do that by myself, but I've had a whole range of skills that I can now go away and build on. So if we can have another couple of weeks' worth of exposure to all kinds of stuff, that's a really good starting point. And then talking to this lot, just fabulous. It's a really nice family to be part of. I've come up to Humberside for my second visit to the trainees at the Forge, and I've heard good things, that they're very excited, they're very motivated, and they've been making some really interesting stuff. And one trainee has some particularly exciting news. Now I just want to be a blacksmith. When did that moment hit you? About halfway through the first week. I don't want to sound cheesy, but I, I thought this is meant to be. Yeah. 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 Well, I can see by the way you're speaking, it meant to be. So we're, we're at the halfway stage, effectively. Yeah, they're at the halfway stage. Mm. Um, the progress has been varied. Take them one by one. Right, we'll take Dominic first, because Dominic shows the most promise of any of them. He's enthusiastic, he's got the aggression that you need, and he's confident. What about the other two? Well, we'll take Hugh first of all. Okay. He actually is a perfectionist, I think. And he tries very, very hard to get things as perfect as he can. One might think, if someone said he tries his best all the time to get as perfect as he can, as a glowing tribute, but from the tone in your voice and what I'm reading between the lines, you're seeing that as a real fault. It's a fault because you're spending too much time bashing the metal about. And as a consequence of that, he's kind of torturing the iron. And finally, Jill. Jill is a totally different kettle of fish, really. She's improved dramatically, but her level is still well below the level of the guys. Don may be right about this, but I want to get Jill's take on the last couple of weeks. So first thing is, is how's it been? How's, what's the experience been like? Um, 
Bits of it have been terrific. Mm. Bits of it, it's no fun.